Hello YouTube, I'm Dr. Tactical and the doctor will see you now. So today we are going to discuss gun mounted lights. Up until today, uh, I have remained pretty mainstream and we've seen some really cool guns that I've been fortunate enough to get my hands on. We have seen a lot of paraphernalia for guns and um, for the most part everything's been pretty mainstream. But today we are going to take this channel uh, and make it a little controversial because I know that my feelings on uh, gun mounted lights are kind of counter a lot of what you're going to hear. And I will give you my opinions and let you guys see what you think. In fact, I look forward to looking at the comments section. Please comment away if you agree and especially if you disagree because I am open to learning on this. Um, also, please subscribe. It really helps the channel so that I can get more toys to share with you guys. Okay, so gun-mounted lights. Why? Why are they of any benefit? To the best that I've been able to find out, there seem to be four main reasons that you would want a gun-mounted light. One is to identify the threat. Makes perfect sense. You don't want to shoot something that you didn't mean or intend to shoot uh, because it's too dark and a gun mounted light certainly could solve that problem. Number two, and really I would have to say the one, the main reason that I put lights on my guns, at least for the competition guns, is it adds weight to the front end of the gun. And that additional weight helps with um, recoil, with bringing the gun back into the, you know, the next shot. Number three, holster retention. That's very specific. Um, I have here two staccatos, one is sporting an Olight, one is sporting a TLR1HL. The purpose for the TLR1HL is I have a tier, uh, tier 1 concealed holster here, and this specific holster actually is specific to the light, not to the gun. So multiple guns can be put into this, I probably should show you, there is no magazine in here, and we are empty. We'll put the safety on anyway, just because that's good uh, procedure. So this gun, goes, the C2, goes in and it is retained by the flashlight, by the, um, what is this, the TLR1, uh, the HL. So multiple guns can be used with this light. You'll get the same retention. Um, so there's something to be said for that. And fourth is to disorient the threat. Because obviously if you are an assailant or you know, somebody with bad thoughts and you're working in the dark, sneaking around, all of a sudden a flashlight is shown upon you or even more intensely, a strobe light is shined on you. Uh, it could disorient you, it could throw you off. So for number one and number four, number one is identify the threat, number four is disorient the threat. Both of those do not require a gun mounted light. Any flashlight that you have on you uh, could suffice for both of those. In fact, they're probably preferred. Now, when you're walking around with a flashlight and they identify the threat, if you're walking around your house with your light on, looking for a problem, and your main flashlight, your main source of light is the light on the gun. By the way, this also unloaded, not that I'm aiming anything at you guys. Um, so this light is, effectively showing me. I, I can see what I'm aiming at. The problem is I may come across something that I don't want to shoot, that I don't intend to shoot. And it's, you know, right, yes, it's going to help me identify that it's what I don't want to shoot. But while it's identifying it, that, it, that target is in line with my barrel. So that, that's a very, I'm flagging uh, a, a, um, something I don't want to hit and that's not acceptable. Uh, it, it's, in fact, I believe it's actually a crime. Uh, so the right way to handle this, the ideal way to handle this, would be to have a, a, a flashlight in your other hand. 
and hopefully that you could use to sort of go around and check, which also would give you the opportunity not to draw attention too specifically to yourself. I mean, I guess you could walk around with a gun like this, um, but again, you are identifying your position using a flashlight. So when it comes to identifying the threat, I think a superior way to do this is to have a additional flashlight that is not mounted to the gun that will allow you to identify the threat, identify the non-threats in a safe manner. Um, and also to maybe even keep the light out of your, you know, a, a, away from your body in case it's drawing fire. Okay, so number four was disorient the threat. Exact same thing. There's no reason that that disorientation light needs to come from the gun. It, uh, to have it up in a different source would be probably preferable, beneficial, same, of, same effect on the uh, target. So as for adding weight to the front of the gun, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I do see the benefit to that. So why the hell do we need to spend hundreds of dollars on some of these lights to, to just to be weights on the end of the gun? You don't. There's really, um, now, don't get me wrong, I'm showing you an O-Light, which has, this light probably has about 5,000 rounds uh, used with it on the gun, without any problems whatsoever. Now, my TLR-1 uh, had about 200 shots before it broke, um, and this is a much more expensive light. However, I'm not trashing this company. You know, there, it, it, that's a sample size of one. And I will tell you that I called the company, could not get through to anybody. Um, so I sent them an, an email and they just sent me a thing and said, send it back, cost me $12 to send it back to them. When I contact a company, I don't let them know that I am a world famous big time YouTube uh, star. Um, that's capable of destroying their business or making them a household name. I just let them think I'm one of you little people. So I, I, I couldn't get hold of them, I didn't fight it. I sent this with the $12 uh, postage that I had to do with the label that they sent me. And I actually bought another one. <laughs> because when you buy a holster like that, you're kind of limited to the light that you have. And I really like that holster. I'm like, all right, I just won't use the light, I'll just use it to, for the retention in the holster. To my shock, the light came back in four days. Not even four business days, I don't think. Um, in four days, I had this, the light came back. I was shocked and it was all cleaned up, looked nice. Um, so yes, I had a problem with it. Yes, they handled it like champs. Yeah, I'm a little pissed off. I had to pay 12 bucks for something that really shouldn't have broken that quickly. Um, one of my friends tried to blame me, but it wasn't my fault. This really was, uh, I, in fact, I have a little video that I'll share with you um, so you can see what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so this um, TLR1 HL light uh, was purchased primarily because I wanted to use a Tier 1 concealment holster that focused on the light. Um, I didn't really have a lot of past experience with this light, but one of my friends who um, has that holster and uses this light lent it to me, lent me his, and I had it, and, and it was comfortable. However, this is what happened to the light, probably with less than 200 rounds fired through the gun. Um, really, really disappointed in that. And I just wanted to sort of show that because I take a lot of crap from my O-lights. And uh, this, I, my O-lights have thousands of rounds through them. And I've, I've never had the need to send back. Uh, also, calling this company was really a disappointment. Um, they they have not. I have was not able to really get through to a person. Uh, basically, you just sort of go on and work your way through their website and get a thing and send it in, and that is what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, more on this in a bit. Okay. Um, so you, you see you see the problem that I had. Anyway. So far, aside from that instance, I mean, this the, the lights do a great job of adding weight. Uh, they do a they do the holster retention, but.
but the other two things really not necessary. Now there are, when you go to gun shows, you will come across some really interesting, very inexpensive, um, well, essentially turds uh, that you get. These, and you can tell they're, they're from China. There's usually Chinese writing on the stickers or the box. Um, and we all know Holosun made in China. It's a really high quality product. There's, you know, there is quality that comes from there. But when you go to a gun show and you get a light and the, oh, sorry, <laughs> nothing in there, nothing in here. So we are empty. Okay. Um, anyway, something like this uh, tends to just fly off the gun sometimes. And it really serves no purpose at all. It, it, it looked really cool. I think it was like $30. So when, when you get into that range, you kind of know what you're getting. It, it also has um, a pressure plate that you can put on the, on the grip and all kinds of stuff. So... Now, it does have a laser on it, which I don't think I would use for uh, even pointing while doing a lecture. But le lasers are a whole other topic. And we'll, because that's, that's, and that's something I do want to cover because there is some value to lasers. And if you're going to do a laser, you do want to spend some money and get a good one. There's certain things on guns that you, you don't want to be, be cheap on. Obviously, there's the gun itself. And there's the optic, if you're using an optic. This one doesn't have one. But the optics, whether it's a handgun, whether it's a rifle, if you're not going to hit your target, there's no point. So it's worth it to spend the money on a, on a good optic. It is worth it to spend the money on the gun. It is worth it to get nice grips that you're comfortable with. It's definitely worth it to get a holster that you're comfortable with. All these things are of value to you. The light, not so much. Um, you got to really think about what it brings. When I sit there and watch these videos of people shining them on fences, showing how many candela they have, and really, what do you? The light is not really contributing that much, and I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna get railed on this um, because there's some really uh, some YouTubers who I really respect who spent a lot of time on this, and 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 I, I have to say I watched it. I was I was intrigued. I was interested. I'm I'm a gadget person, but. When you're thinking about what, you're, and if you have the extra funds just to have fun with it and to, to run with it, get the strongest, most powerful light that you can get. Get the one like on the Luxor, on the top of the Luxor, you know, that can be seen from space. I have no problem with that. You know, I, I never begrudge somebody from spending money on toys. I, I live in a glass house on that one. However, when you're trying to make decisions and what what to spend your money on, you know, the light isn't something that's really a priority. In my case... You know, I, I bumped up the to the TLR one. It's a more expensive light than I, I wanted to get. But for the whole, being able to use one holster for multiple guns, uh, and so far I've been pretty happy with that setup. Um, so there's, some, there's absolutely something to be said for that. So I'm trying to think what else I want to tell you. I think that I pretty much covered it. This isn't a, a long video. This is just sort of an opportunity to talk for a minute about lights so please subscribe i i really would appreciate it i'm trying to hit some some numbers here that are of value so that uh the youtube money starts pouring in and i can start buying uh all kinds of cool toys which i promise to let you guys uh enjoy through through the magic of youtube so thank you all and i'm dr tactical dr tactical out